Welcome back to the line. We're near the halfway point of this year's 60-day legislative session. And according to some Republican lawmakers, the experience has been more spectator than active participant. At least that's the growing assessment from Representative Jim Townsend of Artesia, who says it's frustrating to feel like your voice isn't being heard amidst last year's blue wave. And Jeffrey, certainly we've seen a lot of progressive issues come front and center forcefully this year, but voters spoke pretty loudly last November. They wanted change. How much responsibility do Democrats have to just keep pushing and then, you know, if someone doesn't like it, elections have consequences, or do we, well, yeah. is there something else? I was going to use that, thank you. For <laughs> <laughs> Previewing President, it. President Obama, yeah, that's good. Right? Obama said, you know, elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. I think the, the interesting, I don't want to say danger, but concern is when you have so much power yeah. throughout the state in one particular party line, if you will, on that, on that side, mm -hmm. is there a danger of maybe those folks, the Democrats, not responding even to those, their own constituencies, and sort of galvanizing around a, a party platform that becomes almost like monolithic governance mm -hmm. on that side. Mm -hmm. And also, human nature is such that, uh, and I think it was Lincoln that said, you want to test a person's character, give them power. Right. So now yeah. that they have power, they, when I say they, my friends, the Democrats, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty monolithic, mm -hmm are they themselves going to become a machine that's so big that maybe there's a fissure there because there is no one checking and counterpointing them right. that you become like what's happening with, uh, let's say, Cortez, extreme liberalism here in New Mexico. Well, there's always it's, John Arthur Smith, though. Fine, fine. <laughs> but maybe creating its own division within sure. the whole party because you don't have a, 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 a counterpoint. Right. And I think healthy debate is part of democracy. Mm -hmm. and. Again, human nature is such, if, I, if we have a, a group of folks with so much power, mm -hmm. revenge politics. We've waited eight years. It's our turn. Mm -hmm. We don't even need to talk to you. And I think that is and will happen. Merritt, what should be the strategy for, the, for Republicans this last bit of the session, this last half? Should it be just say no to everything? If, if, if Democrats are not going to play, we're not going to play either. How should they play this? I think um, the Republicans to watch are Rebecca Dow and Kelly Fajardo. They're doing really smart things. Right. Um, they are uh, introducing bills uh, that are getting out of committee. Mm -hmm. They are um, continuing to do the work. They were instrumental in creating the first bipartisan women's caucus. Mm -hmm. They're working to get more women elected. Kelly Fajardo's Rise New Mexico project, which I think is brilliant. Right. Um, they are not getting bogged down uh, and, uh, and being hurt. I think the danger that uh, this Democratic caucus is putting themselves in is elections are decided by the middle, mm -hmm. not by the left, not by the right. Mm -hmm. And I think they are moving past their own uh, majority constituency uh, on some of these issues. And that, I think, gives the, uh, the Republicans a tremendous opportunity to make up some ground in 2020. Mm. Interesting. I'm glad you brought up 2020. How, should, how large should this loom? Do you know what I mean? I well, mean, I think 2020 things looms, turn over. I think it looms quite large. And, and here's the thing. What, what we see in the national discussion is this, um, and, and, I'll, and I'll use the example of the wall, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the Republicans had control on the federal level for two years, and they did nothing about immigration or the wall. Mm -hmm. And the electorate rightly says, well, if it was so important to you, why didn't you get it done when you can get it? You could get it done. And majorities. So what yeah. we see right now is Democrats saying these are the things that are important to us. Let us get them done while we can get them done. Because, because if anything, what we see in terms of the last however many years is the swing back and forth between the parties. Mm -hmm. That voters will reject the party that they just elected, mm -hmm. and they will move in the other direction. You cannot assume that in 2020, as mm -hmm. much as you would like it, you can't right. assume that in 2020 all of your stars will be aligned the way they are right now. Right. I would be disappointed if the Democratic <clears throat> Party, if the folks in the legislature right now weren't moving forward quickly on their priorities because there's only so much time, 60 days now, 20, 30 days next year. Right. Um, and if they don't get it done, the people who are the most likely voters, I mean, to, to, to disagree with you slightly, the people who are most likely voters, people who are paying attention to what's happening in politics, right. Um, the most consistent voters are going to say, well, you just wasted two years. Mm -hmm. Why did I give you that? That's right. Speaker Brian Egolf yes. has been quoted as saying, um, there's definitely a big change, but he said New Mexico voters, quote, spoke very clearly to give a mandate to Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. Mm -hmm. You can always kind of fall back on that when you have the majority of the size, can't you, and just kind of go there. But is something lost 
from what Jeffrey was talking about, the, the idea of ideas need a place to scrum and to be hashed about and you know, yeah. it's better for everybody if both sides are in the mix. I definitely think mm -hmm. it's easy to confuse, no one's listening to us with, the voters spoke, they wanted to go in this different direction, right. but an echo chamber is, you know, intellectually non-rigorous and right. not a really good idea. Right. I mean, and to, you know, your question to Merit, what should they, what should Republicans do? Well, this is the answer to everybody is have mm -hmm. excellent ideas, mm -hmm. right? Encourage debate well, around excellent ideas. Republicans do sure. this to themselves. In 2018, the Republican caucus very specifically told candidates, Nate Gentry ain't here no more. You are on your own. Mm -hmm. So there is no unity. There is no assistance. We saw RP New Mexico go down to a bank account of $1,500. Right. So then to, a after that very lackluster campaign period, to sit back and say, we're not getting anything through and no one's listening to us. Yeah, think? Come on. I'm so glad you did that instead of me. <laughs> where does, where does uh, Republican Party Chairman Steve Pierce fit into this for you? Does he have a voice here? To, to Absolutely, because yeah. usually party chairs, state party chairs, are very passionate politicians who can't get elected. Well, Steve Pierce is the unique uh, element where he's a passionate politician who has been elected many times. Right. And so he knows the game. He knows what's needed. He uh, has a statewide view. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, uh, his his election was a great boost for the Republican Party, who went from a majority in the House to 2014 to 25 seats in 2018. Right. And so, so, Mayor, do you yeah. think Republicans like me are going to rally around him? I'm I'm woefully unimpressed. He's probably knows more about politics than I'll know in a million and a well, half. Because years. we're Republicans, but, our favorite thing to do is hate each other. We have no party unity, so I agree. That doesn't surprise me. Well, mm -hmm. I just don't find him. And I know he's listening, but I just don't find that leadership that who, compelling. Who would you? Who would you? I don't know you. Actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I like my day job. <laughs> right. Is party unity really possible for Republicans right now, or is it just kind no. of? To, right. <laughs> Yeah. I, don't, I don't see it. I, and I yeah. think and, and it, which is a, another thing. If you just real quickly, if I'm a Republican and I am, why would I even think about running in New Mexico? I mean, you, right. you, with all respect to Sophie here, you've got the Northeast Heights. That's becoming blue. That was always a red right. population. Yeah. Good, bad, or ugly, mm -hmm. it's very discouraging to be a Republican in New Mexico and mm -hmm. want to possibly think about running for office. Mm -hmm. I don't know how electable we are. Yes, I understand how the pendulum goes back and forth, but I don't necessarily agree that that's going to happen. Right. I think New Mexico is going to be a democratic monolithic state for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Interesting point there. Serge, you know, there's, there's Everyone's got something they want out of our legislature, sort of our system, a, a, kind of a weird thing that we have. We all pack up there every January and just see what we can get and then go home and you know, strategize for the next time. Is there a danger of overreaching here? I know we've been sort of touching on that a little bit here, but is that a possibility here? Or again, is it just making bills happen and legislation happen, but you have to govern after that? Do you know what I mean? It's not just passing law. You have to do some things and make things work. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a regrettable feature of our current state pol political system and state that mm -hmm. you can no longer say, you know, well, you know, what goes around comes around, so we should, you know, try to make sure that um, overreaching doesn't happen or whatnot, right. or improvident moves na made in the politics don't happen. Right. Um, so I do think right now the, the prudent move is, you know, reach as far as you can while you have the chance to do it because right. you never know what's going to happen. But there are some things, Sophie, where there is agreement. Ethics Commission, mm -hmm. you know, there's some things some, that are happening. Some, some, right, commission, right, well, there you go, universal. right. Not everyone's on board, but right. But there are issues that can have agreement, don't you think? I mean, sure. that, that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, um, if you can do it in 15 seconds, I mean, sorry those, about that. But those, and those aren't dead yet, as far right. as I know. But, but um, mm -hmm. I, I, do, I do think that, that given our current landscape, it is, it would be foolish not to push ahead on the things that you believe the voters have sent you there to do. Right. There you go. That's all the time we have for this week. But be sure to let us know what topic you'd like to see us tackle here on the line. Leave us a note on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. And be sure to join our new Facebook group, Focus on New Mexico.